I'm going to go ahead and let Mike Lego tell you how I feel about Nathan McKinnon's play at the end of the third period. I'll have none of your guff. You can't do that! Avs lose to the Seattle Kraken 3-2 in overtime. This was a good competitive game. I don't know if I would say it was the funnest game ever. It was certainly slow paced at a lot of times, very grindy and mucky all the way through. Fairly ideal for Colorado looking to get one done on the second half of a back to back. And the game itself also looked pretty good for Colorado for about 57 or so minutes. The first two periods were mostly even on the possession metrics. The Avs probably getting a little bit better of the scoring chances and high danger stuff, but really fairly back and forth. And we'll get to the bad from Nathan McKinnon in this game, but he also got the Avs started with something really good. Avs sent this puck in and around to rim. It's a good job by Val Nachushkin on the far side to get in and create a puck battle and ultimately win this to allow the Avs to get possession of the puck. Now it is helped by Arturi Lekkanen. Just nothing clean, a bit messy hockey, but you get in there, you cause chaos, good things happen. It eventually comes out, Nathan McKinnon picks it up and then just makes Brandon Tanev look like a fool. Completely walks the man before ripping a puck top shelf. He's pretty good. You see, Nathan McKinnon has the ability to just be better than you, no matter what. And the reality is, he's going to do amazing stuff like this, and that's going to raise the bar on his expectations. When he doesn't meet them, it hurts. That was the only goal scored in the first. You get into the second period, and it was more of the same. Honestly, second period was just Good old-fashioned quality. Again, maybe not the most exciting, but this was two good teams going at each other. Both teams would pick up one more goal in the second with Seattle scoring first. Clean possession by Bowen Byram here, but he ultimately gets chased down and loses this puck, and the Avs aren't able to stop Seattle from there. The puck eventually is going to come back out to the point, and this is just a slapper towards the net. Nachushkin maybe loses his man just a little bit, but this is a great tip put on this puck. There are absolutely some things you could clean up leading up to that goal getting scored, but that's also just quality play from Seattle. Sometimes your opponent does good things, sometimes they score goals. You just gotta go out and be better than them. And the game isn't tied for long as the Avs get that goal back less than two minutes later. Newhook and Devontae are gonna engage in a puck battle in the corner that they're going to eventually win to get the Avs going the right direction. It's that hard little work that gets things going for Colorado. This puck does eventually come out to Kale McCoy car who sees Dennis Mulgan who's flown the zone a very nice job from a car to hit him in stride Mulgan now gets a clean breakaway where he's able to get in and finish Mulgan continues to be effective in limited minutes for Colorado I think ultimately when they get healthy he's probably still a forward that ends up getting scratched first but he's at least making a case to try and keep himself in the lineup and honestly from there the Avs do a pretty good job of locking it down in the third period the possession does start to swing towards Seattle a little bit not because the Avs necessarily turtle but because they're playing defensively sound hockey and let's be honest second half of a back-to-back -back in the third period your legs are going to start to go a little bit and the Avs are getting through that period when they make mistakes Georgiev is behind them making very good saves. He had multiple breakaways that he stopped in this game. You get it under three minutes left in the game, and it's starting to look like this should be one the Avs can take. And then one of your best players just does something boneheaded and entirely unnecessary. This should be a nothing play. A weak shot goes on net, the rebound comes out, but Nathan McKinnon is able to pick it up cleanly and has all the space in the world to do whatever he wants. You're up one. There's two and a half minutes left in this game. All you really need to do with this puck is get it out of the zone. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. He can cut in behind his net and chill, assess his options. He can rim it up the far side. He could probably rim it up the opposite side. There is a skater there, but you rip it hard, you're going to get it by him. He can assess his options. He could probably go to any of these three players with a pass, and you'd be okay. Lecky might be a little bit sketchy there, but he could turn and throw it up the center of the ice. He could do anything but what he does, and that is gets his head up, see a man coming, and decides he wants to try and walk him. There's just absolutely no reason to even try this, let alone consider it. Again, he has options. He can now rim it. He can get it to Lecky that way. He can reverse it. He'll have players coming in there. He could 
pretty much just stop and pin this thing against the boards, and it would have been a better choice than what he tries to do. The walk does not even come close to working. He just gets completely bodied on the play, and things fall apart immediately from there. The only defenseman who does a decent job here is Jack Johnson actually defending his guy. Devon Taves kind of just takes nothing. McKinnon has completely removed himself from the play, and it ends up in the back of the Avs net. McKinnon obviously upset with himself. You just need better. Better awareness, a better play, understanding of the situation. You just cannot have that from your best players. And look, I get it. In the grand scheme of things, Nathan McKinnon is going to win you a whole lot more games than he costs you. And sure, it's not entirely Nathan McKinnon's fault. You had other poor plays surrounding that. But ultimately, McKinnon is the one that you expect the most out of. It's just a tough look when you have a game against a quality opponent and you're in a situation where the Avs have lost their last two in a row. They're trying to get back on track, and it's your best player that does that to you. It ends up ultimately costing you the game. Now, the Avs do get a point out of this game still, which, understanding the situation, is not good enough, but it is certainly better than no point. And the overtime was just poor. The Avs never end up touching the puck, and a bad change leads to the game being over. Seattle resets in overtime. The Avs do have tired legs here, but this is just an absolutely awful change. As Seattle gets back into their zone, both of the two deep players, I believe it's Taves and I forget who the other one was, maybe Val. Uh, they go to reset to the, the bench and they're just very slow about it. Seattle immediately recognizes and takes advantage going up the opposite side of the ice. By the time the puck is up there, I think it's Kale and Lekkanen. Neither have any chance of ever getting into this play and Gord beats Georgiev talk a lot about widening the lens, and for the most part, the Evs are still fine here. They're still going to be a playoff team. They can still head toward the playoffs, get a little bit healthier, and be extremely dangerous. But depending on how you set that lens, they've now lost three in a row in a stretch where they should be pushing towards the top of the Central and the West. They've made their job a lot harder to win the Central over this past week. They've turned what needed to be good to very good play down the stretch to now what needs to be great play down the stretch to really get in there and compete for home ice in the Western Conference Finals or the Cup. And is this the end of the world? Do you need to burn it down? No. Absolutely not. The Avs will continue to be fine. They don't necessarily need home ice in the playoffs to be a very good hockey team. But... They're just continuing to make their lives harder. They've done a lot of making their lives harder this season, and you're still kind of just waiting for them to clean it up and stop doing things like that. Hopefully, they can find ways to make their life a little bit easier in the last 20 games of the season. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and you gotta find ways to win.